Welcome to North Suburban Baseball in the intercity matchup between the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights, today's home team, and the St. Louis Park Orioles. I'm John Fromm, and I'll be joined during the broadcast by Chris O'Connor, Benilde St. Margaret parent and PA announcer. We're excited to bring you today's game as both teams are basically in a not jam in second place in the North Suburban Conference. St. Louis Park, as you see, 11 and four overall, eight and three in the conference. Benilde St. Margaret's 12 and three, nine and three in the conference. So basically a half game separates these teams. This is the last week of the regular season in North Suburban play. And there you see the Orioles lined up from right to left. You've got Joey Jaramillo, Joe Burnley, Jake Lucas Savage, Kurt Greenbush, Archie Olson, Kyle Nordstrom, Jason Keller, Andrew Henstein, Pat Borderwick, and Kenny Ferruli, your starting lineup. We're gonna step away momentarily as the Benilde St. Margaret's PA announcer brings us our national anthem. Just stick with us here on 16 for exciting North Suburban baseball action. a beautiful rendition of our nation's national anthem to begin things here on a partly cloudy Wednesday afternoon here at Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knight Field. I want to give a special shout out to Tom Remfer, father of TJ Remfer, who uh, was kind enough to step up and volunteer his services as a crack cameraman today. We were in definite need of a camera helper and I know Paul Broden, our director, who does yeoman's work all the time, and I were very appreciative. Uh, can't always bring these games to you in the community without some, on occasion, some different help. So on the, on the mound for Benilde St. Margaret's tonight, right-hander Michael Kaminsky going to get the call for Benilde St. Margaret's. Kaminsky, no stranger to pitching against quality opponents. This is his sixth start of the year. He's 4-1 and one on the year with a 2.80 ERA. You see he's logged 30 innings. 37 hits allowed, he struck out 17, and he's only walked nine. Uh, ve definitely a veteran. The Orioles saw him last year in the season opener for both teams as he started last year for Benilde St. Margaret's. These teams played a split double header last year. There you see a look around the infield for Benilde. Rakini, Studsrud, Hanks, and McGill, all seniors left to right from third short, second to first. Riley Crane, Sam Lynch, and Marshall Hempke man the outfield for the Red Knights, and senior Chris Landis going to do the catching this year. Really done a nice job stepping up and been a big, important contributor as the Red Knights ran off to a 12-0 start of the season and moved up to their number three ranking in the state before stubbing their toe a couple games against quality opponents last week. We mentioned the Orioles... Uh, and Benilde have met once already this year. St. Louis Park with an eight to seven victory on last, excuse me, last week against uh, Benilde. It was a game that the Orioles bashed 14 hits in the Red Knights seven, but it was an eight to seven comeback victory paced by this man right here, Joey Jaramillo Jr. shortstop leading it off for the Orioles. Jaramillo gonna take low there for ball one. Joey started a lot as a, so a sophomore last year at second base and has moved over to contribute a lot from his shortstop spot. He's gonna work ahead in the count, two and oh. One of the things Joey's done nicely this year is he's hitting 231, but he does have eight walks on the season for St. Louis Park and an extra base hit. And there's a line drive towards left field and that'll be a solid single for Jaramillo on the 2-0 fastball. 
as he hits it cleanly on a line to left field. Next up for St. Louis Park, another junior. Here's Joe Burnley manning Santa Field for St. Louis Park. He's on his third year in the varsity, and Joe comes into the game with a 267 batting average. He does have seven doubles on the year and a triple, and leads the Orioles with nine stolen bases. Right handed open stance. Going to take the curveball high for ball one here. The Orioles, we didn't get a chance to go over their lineup, but. Basically, you've got Jeremillo, Burnley, and then the pitcher, Lucas Savage, the senior, due up next on deck. He'll swing through that fastball there, down and away. Good location there by Kaminsky as he evens the count at a ball and a strike. We're just underway, top of the first inning here on Wednesday, May 14th. North Suburban Baseball action. A little token toss over to first. Jeremillo leading off at first over there. Being held on nicely on the right side. That's Mikey McGill, the senior left-handed pitcher as well as first baseman today. Here's a nice low breaking ball by Kaminsky and swings through it as Burnley to work the count to one ball and two strikes. So he's seen a couple of breaking balls and then a, a strike on an outside corner fastball. We'll see what the senior Kaminsky goes to, what he reaches into his bag of tricks here for. And that's strike three at a high fastball there. So Burnley goes down swinging for the first strike out of the inning. And that'll bring up today's pitcher, senior, and three-year starter, Jacob Luca Savage for the Orioles. Jake on the year, right hovering around 300 at 298. He's got 14 hits and 47 at bats, including four doubles, and he's knocked in nine. Slightly open stance. Again, he's, Kaminsky works ahead nicely with an 0-0 breaking ball, pitching backwards in the count there, going with the off-speed stuff early. We'll see if he comes in hard with a fastball here as the senior Landis is gonna drop the fingers down for a sign. Lucas Savage gonna just pop that into short right field, just an easy can of corn out there. No problem that time in the right field and a nice squeeze by Marshall Hemke, the senior right fielder for the out number two. So he works ahead in the count and Kaminsky does register the second out on a pop to short right field there. And that'll bring up uh, St. Louis Park's leading hitter, not only this year, but last year, senior Kurt Greenbush hitting 438 on the year, 21 for 48 with five doubles, two triples and a pair of long home runs. Kurt, as he swings hard at the fastball, also one of the leading hitters in the state in terms of RBIs as Kurt has knocked in 20 on the season which I believe is fourth in the state of Minnesota in only 14 games, so. See if Jeremiah moves here at all with two outs and Greenbush being a big RBI threat. Both Lucas Savage and Greenbush back-to-back -back in the order, three-year starters on the Oriole hockey team as well as forwards. When he waits hard on that fast, on that breaking ball, hits it hard, and Kaminsky with a nice job fielding his position to register the one three put out for out number three. Looked like he got a curveball there, and Kurt stride with a small stride ahead. He kept his hands back and did hit a line drive right up the middle that Kaminsky was able to field beautifully and register the third out of the inning. In case you just joined us, this is game two of the. Uh, Inner City Series, these teams in their last week officially in the North Suburban Conference, these two along with Cooper will go into the West Suburban next year. You take a look at the Benold St. Margaret's batting order that's gonna attack senior right-hander Jake Lucasavage. You got Sam Lynch in center, Nathan Hanks we talked about at second, Keaton Studsrud, great quarterback, player of the year in the North Suburban. The shortstop, Mikey McGill at first, Michael Kaminsky the pitcher, Chris Rakini, nicknamed Vladimir at third base. Marshall Hemke in right. Chris Landis doing the catching, hitting eighth. And Riley Crane in left field, batting ninth. And they're going to see that right-hander, Jacob Lucas Savage for the Orioles. Lucas Savage got a chance to pitch some quite a bit last year as a junior and uh, did get some experience, and he's going to make his fifth start of the season today. There you see he's 3-1 on the year. He has 19 strikeouts in 20 innings. Has given up 33 hits, his ERA right around five. Jake definitely a strike thrower as he hasn't walked a lot of batters this year. And uh, he'll mix in an arsenal of a fastball along with a change in a slower curve. So 
Orioles, we should mention, this game being played on Wednesday, the Orioles played Monday and Tuesday, and uh, junior right-handers Kenny Ferruli and Archie Olsen pitched those games. Uh, Kenny just doing yeoman's work as a number one starter for St. Louis Park as a junior this year. Um, they did uh, stub their toe against Fridley on Monday, but had a nice win against Minneapolis Southwest, which, which should help St. Louis Park in the seedings for the sections. That win last night as uh, Olson and Jeremillo combined for seven innings in the 7-5 win over Minneapolis Southwest. Joined here by Chris O'Connor, who slid over from your PA announcer. You're doing double duty. Gonna, Good to have you, Chris. I'll double dip here, here just for a second. Go, let me, let me introduce yours. Let me introduce Sam Lynch here. Hold on, I'll be right back. We're going to have double duty here. Take a listen. For the Red Knights, the center fielder, number 11, Sam Lynch. Now that's what you call yeoman's duty work, <laughs> as he not only does the PA, but then he slides five feet to his left and dons the headset. No stranger to the headset, Chris. Wait till I get the uh, the hot dogs going here in between. <laughs> I'm going to try to be a one-stop shop tonight. It's good that the Park 16 <laughs> booth is so near here. Too. And we should mention that uh, for fans that are watching this game either on Thursday or Friday, come on out on Friday as well because you're going to have senior day. And I know, Chris, you're announcing the, uh, the senior night against what? Cooper on Friday as well here. It's going to be a, a really fun, special night for the kids from Benilla. Twelve seniors on the club this year. My son being one of the seniors and it's been a fun ride to watch these kids go through uh, baseball starting in the junior high and then all the way through senior high. It should be a fun night Friday night. And your son has been with it the whole way through and what a crew. I mean I, we were talking how I've known Nathan Hanks for years oh, yeah. and you got quite a collection of multi-sport athletes on this team as well. This is a uh, it's a good group of kids good athletes good group of kids great parents uh, and they have really really enjoyed playing together over all these years. This is going to be tough to say goodbye to these kids and watch them move on. Well, and I know the feeling as I went through that last year with my senior right. beat at St. Right. Louis Park. And, uh, and, uh, but, you know, I'm glad you'll have the memories of the games you covered as well, as well Absolutely. as a videotape for, for uh, Friday Absolutely. as well. There's a bar, ball hit hard toward second base by Lynch, a nice scoop play by Bordowick, and a soft toss over to Greenbush. We'll retire the speedy Lynch early on here for the first out of the inning. Well, the Red Knights... The second baseman, number 17, Nathan Hanks. And this brings up one of my favorite people as well as baseball players that I ever had the privilege of coaching. This is Nathan Hanks, a senior second baseman. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I had, my son Ryan had the privilege of playing with Nathan for five years in Little League in Crystal and coaching with John. And Nathan uh, was is the epitome of a team first ball player who can bunt it, he can drag it, he can push the bunt. He's really a stellar defender at second base who can, can steal in. And uh, it was really fun for me as well. I know I would have loved to have John be available to do color as well as share some old stories. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and he's hitting nearly 500 for yeah. the Red Knights during his senior year. So. He's having a, a great year. And, and the nice thing about these kids from Benilde is most of them were, all of them were travel ball players, mostly double A, a couple triple A kids. But, you know, they, these were... They're not superstars, but they work hard. They love the game. They're very competitive with what they do, and it's been great to see them play you know, right. not only against each other growing up, but together now. And you know the nice thing, too, you go early on in the lineup here with Lynch, Hanks, and, of course, Studs, Root, et cetera, be it Kaminsky. You've got so, Miguel, you've got so many football players that, <laughs> that warms the heart of a certain John yes. Hanks, Nathan's yes, father. Yes, it does. <laughs> but, and there's something that Nathan's done forever. He works a free ride with one out here. And the speedy Hanks, who's already got five steals on the year, will set the table for uh, Keaton Studsrud. We talked about Hanks, Connor, excuse me, Mr. Connor O'Connor, as a, as he's hitting nearly 460 on the season. But here's Studsrud hitting 489 on the year with five doubles, three triples, a pair of homers. And baseball is probably a second best sport as he's taken his act. Division one as a pitcher to North Dakota next year. So he, he's been hitting the ball hard, right? Uh, and and you know in high school you want to have great contact and really really hit the ball hard. In the last few games, Keaton has really come around. The, the swing has been flawless, and pounding the ball and really hitting well. Right. Well, and he's certainly you know as a three-year starter, I, I've seen him a lot over the last few years as well. And uh, what a quality athlete at shortstop, and you can see why. Uh, the North Dakota Sioux are going to enjoy his exploits as the f football field for the next four well, years. I know talking to his dad, he's very excited <laughs> about getting up there and, and playing ball for them. 
And you know, you, you you talked about we talked about Lynch and Hanks and Studs Root, and both of these schools. So many of the almost every kid that starts plays at least two, if not yes. three, sports yeah. for these schools. So that's wonderful. This has really turned into a fun rivalry too. They're they're both both good teams this year. Uh, St. Louis uh, Park obviously got the best of us last week at their home field, and and I know, I know the Red Knights would really like right. to win this game. Tonight. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, there's there's section opponents. There's only a week, and there's a hard line drive up the middle by Studs with a clean single. But yeah, I mean, absolutely, this is a rematch. You know, the last five times these teams have met, St. Louis Parks won three out of the five, yes. but it's been dog fights all five games. So, the first base for Vanille, number 23, Mike. McGill. And that'll bring up the left-handed pitcher who's playing first base today, I'm just doing like Mike McGill. And Mike on the year, 13 for 44 with a 295 rate. You know, I, I take a look at the stats, Chris, and Mike's hitting fourth in the order, and he's doing what you want for a cleanup guy, 15 RBIs out of 13 hits. So there's a chopper back to the mound to Luca Savage. Going to take the force at third. Probably the right play mm -hmm. because it was mm -hmm. hit so softly they weren't going to turn two anyway. So he cuts the lead runner down on a 1-5 put out to retire Hanks. The fielder's choice will put McGill at first base and move Studs Rude to second. For the Red Knights, number 12, Michael Kaminsky. And here's the right-handed pitcher today, Michael Kaminsky, who's also having a great year at the bat, hitting 327. He as well with 13 RBIs out of that five hole. And had a great talk with John Hanks last week, Chris, about uh, him coming out for football this year. And just, you know, you can imagine everything kind of turns back to football when I talk to Coach Hanks. So. We had John on the other day when we carried the game against Irondale on Monday, and we had Hanksy on for an inning or two talking yeah. a little football. And, you know, it's it's always uh, right around the corner. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> You're either in the season or it's right around the corner. And he's up fishing this week, we yeah. should mention. So oh, yeah. he's going to be back on Friday. But uh, I know he, he's in here in spirit today, so. He's probably excited about the Vikings draft last Absolutely. week and the mini camps, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. So there looks like a knuckle curve Lucas Savage might came there. He's got the slow curve, and then I haven't seen that pitch in the in previous years, but might be something the senior Lucas Savage has added, but definitely preying on the aggressiveness by throwing it about forty miles an hour. So and then he comes back with a little fastball that misses as well, and that'll push the string out to three and one here. So we'll see if uh, Coach Hemke does anything with the runners with a three one count two down here. Got a little speed obviously on second base with Studzard. He can move. It'll take on that and that's going to load the bases here with two up. So nice piece of hitting by Kaminsky going to fill the sacks. Other Knights, third baseman number 13, Chris Rakini. And here's one of the seniors as well, Chris Rakini, my son, and a lot of these kids at Park played with Chris growing up for years because he was on the travel teams with them. Always nicknamed Vladimir. Loves yes. Vladimir Guerrero, <laughs> loved to be called Vlad, the he man from Vlad. I don't know if the whole yeah, story there. Most but. of the winter was wearing this, this like, bear coat, uh, big black bear coat. He's a furry thing. I would see him at basketball games, and he had just a huge coat, and, of course, it, it wore him well. Right, exactly. I was going to say. He always, he kind of marches to a beat of a different drummer, but I love the kid like there's no tomorrow. And he is the epitome of a baseball fanatic, oh, yeah. telling me he's going to Missouri to, to play on the club team next year. And uh, here's in a situation where he takes strike one here, and that'll push the count to one and one. Sacks are full of red knights. There are two down. And this is Chris Rakini, senior third baseman for Benel. Chris on the year, nine for 32 at a 281 rate. That down as well, and Nordstrom going to have to block that. Kyle Nordstrom, the catcher for St. Louis Park, will not bat today, but uh, he does all the catching for St. Louis Park, the junior. Here's a little fun tidbit for you. Rakini, as you mentioned, headed off to Missouri to go to college. She'll be roommate with my son. Oh, and really? And then there's one other uh, red knight, uh, Nate Meyer, who's a hockey player. Uh, the three of them are going to room together down in Missouri, so wow. they'll be well taken care of down there. So I w uh, that is a great sir. How did they, did they all go on well, the visit together, they, or they, how did they, they whittle down to? It's Mizzou funny Mizzou. they went down at separate times, and then they kept talking, and they uh, they said, "Well, you like Missouri? Yeah, I like Missouri. I like Missouri too. Well, maybe we should all go there, and we get roommates together." So. It just kind of all fell together. So they'll have a, uh, a fun year next year down there being Tigers. 
Well, and I tell you, as a baseball fan, halfway between St. Louis and Kansas City, and there's a nice shot over the first base bag in a field foul. You probably couldn't be in a better place right off the interstate there in Columbia. <laughs> You're halfway between St. Louis and right. Kansas City. I have a feeling a lot of weekends there might be some carpools it in April, May, uh, and September. It wouldn't <laughs> surprise at all. It wouldn't surprise at all. Now, Chris, is your son as is, is big of a baseball fan as Chris and, and just multi-sports? Yeah, John uh, played uh, basketball uh, besides baseball. There's a hard ball hit to short to Jared Millo. Nice clean play, throw over to first. Low throw, but a nice scoop by the senior Greenbush to retire Rakini. Go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Uh, my son's a, a dual sport player too, besides baseball, plays basketball, but his, his first love is baseball. Uh, has always been since he was little, but enjoyed playing basketball for the, uh, the Red Knights. So this is a, well, that'll be, what a, what a small world as well, you especially. Well, yeah. Exactly. And we should mention, folks, if you've heard that O'Connor voice on the radio before, <laughs> I had a chance to listen to one of the Benilla hockey games that yeah, you must have right. done this winter. Yes, we did. Because a lot of times I'll listen to yeah. the replays on 16. There. And, uh, you know, Chris, I know you've been really involved in the Twin Cities media for years, so it's great you're not only volunteering here, but... Uh, a very friendly voice. How long have you been on, you know, oh, involved with Clear Channel stations and whatnot? I have been uh, in media since, oh, I don't want to date myself, but uh, <laughs> three or four years. <laughs> three or four years going on 30 <laughs> plus, uh, but have had a really nice uh, career both on air up here and then uh, was fortunate enough to move on to the business side and, and I do work for Clear Channel Media on the sales side and have okay. for the last several years. And, and I kind of do this just because I kind of still oh. like doing it. It's fun. Oh, you can't, you, you got to, you got to scratch it. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. So, right. Well, that's great. And uh, yeah, I mean, I worked for a lot of years for the Timberwolves, and then I worked in sales for the Vikings. So uh, Doug Westerman and Charlie Frank and I all know. the people you might have known from the sure. '90s and early 2000s were close to me. So. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. Go back yes. and do this, and I'll come back. Will you join? Can I come back? Absolutely. Right. You know, if, if you can st if you can stand me, you're more than welcome to come back anytime. I'll be back in a half inning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Chris O'Connor, the PA man, as well as a parent. This is Archie Olson leading it off for the Orioles. And Archie, the junior, with a laser down the uh, third baseline, high off the netting. Archie got the start on the mound last night, and he's been just a force at the plate for St. Louis Park this year, hitting 439. He's whacked 18 hits and 41 at bats with five doubles. And one of two left-handed strokers in the lineup today for St. Louis Park, along with Andrew Henstein. So Archie's father, uh, Mike, of course, a, a St. Louis Park player back in the class of 80 who was drafted by the Kansas City Royals. And we've talked about that in the past. There's a line shot to short, eaten up by Studs, who a nice clean play over to first and a 6-3 put out as Studs root over to McGill is going to retire Olsen here. We mentioned third game in three days for the Orioles. They've also got a doubleheader tomorrow at home against Tatino Grace on May 15th. 4.15 and 6.30. They haven't, neither team had played each other yet, so they decided with the rain earlier this year to uh, play a doubleheader tomorrow and make sure to get all the conference games in. If it's kind of a very important game because if St. Louis Park wins today, they go into tomorrow with an outside chance of winning the conference if they can sweep Tatino. There's Jason Keller up. And if Benilde can win this game today, then they root for the Orioles to sweep Tatino tomorrow as well. And they might end up in a two-way tie with them. So still a chance for both of these teams to, in theory, get a, get a uh, conference championship. And that's why this is an important game. Jason Keller, the junior, works the count to one and one here. Keller gonna take that pitch. Keller's had a nice junior year. Stars on the basketball court for St. Louis Park and he's hitting 250 on the season. I did see him hit a long home run to left against Benilde last week in a game that the Orioles worked their way out to an early three nothing lead. There's a hard hit ball to second, gonna be eaten up cleanly by Hanks. Little 4-3 put out there, and uh, quick two quick outs here for Kaminsky. Rolling right along with the count here. So that'll bring up Andrew Henstein, who had a big game, the junior Henstein, uh, number nine here. Uh, had three hits last night and a couple of timely clean hits that were important in the win over Southwest. Henstein on the year, 11 for 28. He's got eight singles and three doubles, and he's knocked in 12 runs on his 11 hits. So he's been a big part of the offense. And 
So this is Andrew Henstein, another junior. St. Louis Park today, starting Nordstrom, who's catching. Out of the 10 players that are playing slash DHing, you've got seven of them, excuse me, eight of them that'll be coming back next year. Seven juniors and a sophomore. So a lot of youth serve, but a lot of talent that's on display against a senior dominated Benilde team today. Kaminsky works ahead one and one here. A little slow chain, low curveball. Henstein not able to hold up in a nice location as he kept that down. Henstein gonna swing and miss on that breaking ball. One ball, two strikes here with two down. Close stance for Henstein. He's just gonna, kept the hands back. He's gonna pop it into right field and it's gonna be an easy fly ball that's caught for the third out of the inning as Marshall Hemke comes in to squeeze it and we've got a one, two, three top of the second Four inning here. Spark, no hits. And uh, no, left. no hits, no, no runs and one and a half complete here. We're still scoreless as Benilde will come to play. As I mentioned earlier, I uh, want to thank Tom Remfer again for volunteering his service as a cameraman today. We wouldn't have been able to bring this game to you unless we had some volunteer help. And uh, as we mentioned, St. Louis Park 11 and four on the season. Two, there is a nice shot of Tom. We really appreciate his work. Paul's got a secondary camera he set up there too, but if you ever do want to think about volunteering and, and helping, be it announcing, or even on occasion, Paul does need emergency camera people, just give Paul a call. Paul, maybe this would be a good time to put the phone number up. Yeah, give Paul a call at 952-924-2635. If you want to get a copy of the game today, you're interested in volunteering, you can also go on the parktv.org website to find the replay times of this game. And for those of you that have relatives that are out state or out of the area completely, they can watch the replays uh, on demand or on the city's YouTube channel if you go to YouTube and go on Park TV. So, uh, and you can get DVDs of today's game or even the Irondale games, $15 for a DVD or $10 a piece if you order three or more. So. As Neil Diamond plays in the background, Chris O'Connor singing. He's doing the PA and he's gonna join us again. Here's Marshall Hemke gonna lead things off in the top of the second for, for the Red Knights. Marshall, the son of head coach Greg Hemke with a solid single up the middle to start things for the Red Knights. We mentioned the Red Knights in the first inning had a, a walk a couple of walks to Hanks and Kaminsky, and in the middle, a nice line single by Studrud. They were left, they did leave the bases loaded, but uh, two hits already early on against Luca Savage. So, Luca going to look in at junior catcher Kyle Nordstrom as this is catcher Chris Landis. Landis on the season, having a nice senior year for the Red Knights. Chris on the year hitting th 367 with a pair of doubles. And uh, I know he is Chris O'Connor joins us again. I'm back. He's Double Duty O'Connor, is that, <laughs> I think that was a nickname in the Negro League, Double Duty Radcliffe, and I, I now it's it, Double Duty O'Connor. Yes, I know, I know. I'm tr <laughs> really I'm trying to do it all tonight. <laughs> We're gonna take Paul Broden in the truck to a new level. <laughs> exactly. Is Chris there, is Chris there? No, no, yes. Yeah, there's a nice take. But it's really nice what, you know, we haven't had a Park Benilde game on for baseball, at I least know. in four yeah, years, because, uh, every time, you know, when there's a games on Mondays or Tuesdays, they can never be on, and there's always conflicts. So this is really nice to be able to put, bring one to you today. Boy, it's turned out to be a nice afternoon too. The wind, the wind looks like it's died down for a change. Right, and I'm I'm kind of half into spring, Chris. I got the jacket, but I'm keeping. I got the shorts on here, so I'm really hoping the sun brings the, the temperature up as well. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> I don't, we haven't seen too many shorts here this year. <laughs> no, exactly, just like last year. So Landis works ahead on the count to Lucas Savage as he looks down to Coach Hemke for a sign there. Ferruli up on the grass at third. Slightly open stance. Gonna take on that outside corner, Lucas Savage. He'll vary the speeds of his fastball. He's definitely not trying to throw the ball by anybody. That's not his meal ticket, Chris. And, no, uh, I think he's uh, he's mixing up his pitches very well. I, I think he's throwing a great game so far. Still early. There's a nice attempt at a bunt for really charging hard at third. You're going to see a lot of bunts. I'll tell you, I've you know, in coaching Nathan Hanks all those years, I can't tell you how many times we drilled that into the head, especially the left-handed batters of. We uh, oh, yeah, we used the bunt very effectively the other night at Spring Lake Park, where we 
picked up a win in eight innings, but uh, the bunt the bunt came into play. There's a pop fly. That's short center field. Going to be a long run for Burnley. Let's see if he can get there. And he's going to call off the right fielder, Henstein, and Burnley going to record the put out for the first out of the inning. For the Red Knights, the left fielder, number two, Riley Crane. There will be sporadic moments of silence during this broadcast as I make sure to give ample opportunity for Mr. O'Connor to do his proper <laughs> PA announcing. So I just want to make sure I do my due diligence yeah, we too, want to Chris. give We want to give all the boys as much love as we can here. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> There's a, This will bring up Riley Crane, today's left fielder. Um, didn't know a lot about Riley before I got here today. Why don't you give he me some information? A, um, yeah. a transfer student in, uh, came in from outstate. Uh, family moved up here in the off season. Uh, has played competitive baseball growing up. He's the youngest of four kids in his family. Um, okay. But has uh, really enjoyed the game. He is uh, primarily an outfielder. So I would look for Riley next year for the Red Knights, probably to move into center field. That's okay. his uh, primary position. And then you've got, you know, we, we, we don't see them starting today, but I know like uh, the Vasiri boy and Tyler yes. Weivel yes. and some, several others. And uh, there's a curveball whacked hard towards second. Nice squeeze and a double play. So nice job keeping his hands back was Riley Crane as he hits a line drive right at him. And nice job by Borderwick, the sophomore, to squeeze it and, and uh, turn a double play there. So Both teams uh, hitting the ball on the button. Uh, most of them been at a player, though, right now, and both teams making some uh, good defensive plays, well, making the plays they need to do to stay in the game. I know when I prepped for the game today, Chris, I went through some of the stats. I took about a half an hour and wrote some notes. And, um, you know, it's amazing. St. Louis Park comes into this game. You know, 11 and four, Benil with a 13 and three right. record, so even both teams. Uh, Orioles with 91 runs scored, 61 allowed. Benil with, you know, what a balance sheet, 101 runs scored and yeah. only 50 allowed. Right. right. You know, the runs per game is real similar. Both teams have taken a similar amount of walks. Pitching staffs have given up a similar amount. I, I think, you know, a little bit of an edge in terms of definitely experience, not only with uh, Kaminsky on the hill with all of his work last year and this year, a little, but. Uh, but, you know, kind of a fun game because, you know, Benilde's more of a senior-dominated team. St. Louis Park, you know, more juniors. But that's really irregardless. These kids have played a lot of year of baseball. and Yeah, this is a, a unique year for the Red Knights. I can't recall in recent memory uh, this many seniors on a club. Right. 12, 12 is a lot to carry. Uh, but it was one of those years that uh, there weren't uh, a lot of kids older than them last year. Uh, and the class coming up behind them didn't have as many ball players. It was a... It was a, one of those perfect storms. And you know, Chris, just looking at some of the comparisons of the team, you know, Benilde four and one with a section record, Park six and one. And when you're done doing your PA, we'll talk a little bit about that. You got to tell me who's up here. Where's that? Yeah, <laughs> sorry about Mr. that. I'm, I'm rambling too hard. On draw. Let's see. We are at uh, Patrick Borderwick, sophomore, number Park, seventeen. I'm going to take a quick break again. I'll come okay, back. Okay, yeah, no problem. I, I you think. don't care if I come back, do you? This could no, work out fine. pretty good. Anytime people don't leave me permanently, I'm okay, very happy. All right, so. I, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So this is the sophomore Borderwick who's grown a lot and did a nice job on the Oriole hockey team as a sophomore. His older brother, Jack, was a six-foot-four-inch first baseman for the Orioles who played really well under Coach Austed and Coach McEachern a few years ago. There's a nice slow breaking ball going to get in there to work ahead in the count one and two. So top of the third inning, we're still scoreless here. Borderwick on the season, we should mention. There's another curveball whacked foul. Burkini going to glove that. Borderwick on the season, as a sophomore, started every game. He's played, uh, got 10 hits and 35 trips. He's also done a nice job with five RBIs. Good contact, only six Ks, hitting at 286. And he has played the second most innings in the field of any player on the team. So his glove has been an excellent addition. There you see that one pop foul. As we mentioned, too, defense has been really a, a hallmark, especially up the middle for St. Louis Park with Borderwick and the junior Jeremillo combined. I believe they only have eight errors in the uh, 15 games between the two players, and, and they've had a lot of chances. There's a slow curveball hit hard towards Rakini at third. Rakini off the tip of his glove. Got time to field and throw. Oh, and a tough bang bang play. And he is recorded on the put out there. So a 5 3 is Rakini going to retire Borderwick there. 
And I don't know if we have the replay there, but that was a bang, bang play. Replay not working, but it hit off the tip of Rakini's glove at third. Bordewick ran hard the whole way, and he stuck with it the whole way. St. Louis Park, number five, Kenny. Bang, bang play over at first, Farooli. and that'll bring up uh, Kenny Ferruli, who has just had a fantastic junior year on the mound, and now starting to see more work at the plate as well for the junior Ferruli. Ferruli hits it hard towards Hanks at second. One hopper to Nathan, gonna chip and throw, and that's a quick out. So. So you've got, let's see here, after a leadoff single to start the game, I believe that's eight consecutive batters retired by Kaminsky. So just the hit by Jeremy Millo the first time through. And that'll Four, take us Saint to the Louis bottom. Park, number seven, Joey Jeremio. That takes us back to the top of the order with Jeremy Millo and Joey with that line shot single on the 2-0 pitch to left center. He hits the curveball foul here. Kaminsky gonna start a lot of the batters with breaking balls or change ups. Um, as a senior who's seen so much time on the hill, Kaminsky uh, knows that he needs to vary things. And they did see the Orioles collect 14 hits the last time these two teams played. Even though Michael did not get the start, um, definitely saw a lot of hits off Jimmy Crone and, uh, and other pitchers. So he's definitely showing some respect and not just grooving fastballs in there. There's a fastball right at the knees, right on the outside corner. So that'll push the count to 0-2 for the leadoff hitter, Jeremillo. As we mentioned, one for one on the day for Joey. And he gets him off balance there. Just a little three hopper to shortstop. Studs is gonna unfortunately have that go high and wide. And, uh, and Jeremillo gonna reach on the error there. Nice fielding play by Keaton. Unfortunately, just off the tip of his fingers and he threw that wide with two outs. So two out error puts Jeremillo on for the second time of the game. And that'll bring up Joe Burnley. And there's a replay of that. We've got it back working here. There you can see just a three hopper to short. Keaton had a lot of time, just went off the tip of his glove. Mikey McGill thought momentarily about trying to jump for that, but good backup by the catcher Landis that time, pre preventing Jeremillo from even thinking about going to second. So. Kaminsky working from the stretch for the first time since the first inning here. There's a nice slow breaking ball inside and here's Joe Burnley. Joe, another one of the juniors for St. Louis Park. Real good athlete, clocked at 6'8 at a showcase in a 60 yard time over the winter I was at. So real good wheels. Goes after the high fastball, just a little late on that. Joe's got that little twitch or groove in his in his setup there. We'll see him take a look here. Swing and a miss as well there. Joe on the season, as we mentioned, leading the team with with uh, nine stolen bases, nine for nine, and he's got seven doubles to lead the team. So extra base threat, plenty of power. Man's a good center field and good defensively. Just has a take on that one to push the count to two and two. We'll see if Coach Nunn at third base, the Orioles head coach, has any movement plans in store for Jeremillo here. That'll work it to a full count here. Now you sit, will see Jeremillo off with the pitch. Two down, top of the third inning, no score here. Joe Burnley at the dish, Joey Jeremillo at first. Mikey McGill gonna play behind Jeremillo, and he's off with the pitch. That's a line drive to left, hit hard, and it is gonna fall. Fastball there on the 3-2 count, and Joe Burnley does hit a line single to left. And that'll put first and second with two out and bring up uh, Jacob Luca Savage, today's starting pitcher. Jake Pop to right field to be recorded. For the Orioles, number 19, the pitcher, Jake Lukasavage. One of my favorite names in all sports to announce, Jake Lukasavage. Senior who, uh, as we mentioned, three-year starter on the Oriole hockey team, three-year starter on the baseball team here. Take some breaking ball high again. That's, I think of this being the 12th batter, if my math is correct, I think that's the eighth time Kaminsky started him with a breaking ball for the first pitch. So pitching backwards, which is smart. That one.
one's popped high and foul out of play. Push the count to a ball and, and a strike here. Kurt Greenbush, the Oriole cleanup hitter and leading RBI man on deck. Orioles, if you notice, have brand new uniforms this year as the dugout club and a lot of the parents pooled money, raised a lot to buy the kids new uniforms as they had some. That ball, nice stop by Landis there. Both runners are gonna move up, but a really nice block that time by Landis as that was down in the dirt. Momentary possibility, but Jeremillo got a real good break from second. And then I'll put runners at second and third with two out here. Nice. Lucas Savage, 6'1", 6'2", about 200, 205 pounds, I would guess. Muscular young man. Line drive hard to Studs, is gonna field it cleanly. Slight bobble, throw over to first, gets away as well. I think he would have beaten that out. Unfortunately for the Red Knights, both runs are gonna come across and store, score. It was, a nice, it was a nice field by Keaton, and then the slight bobble might have caused the, the, uh, caused the first run to for sure score, but then when it got by the first baseman, both runs come in. So Burnley and Jeremillo score on the error by Studsrud. Lucas Savage gonna have a courtesy runner over here for him at first. And that is the TJ Remford Jr. outfielder who's also seen a lot of time playing this year and the son of today's cameraman. So the cameraman might hopefully be able to get a shot of his son. Good lead with two outs at first. And unfortunately for the Red Knights, a couple of unearned runs there. And that'll bring up Kurt Greenbush who hit the hard ground ball back to the mound to be retired in the first inning. Little up and in, and that ball's gonna skip away, and indeed, no contact, no foul ball whatsoever, just, they're not calling it, they're saying, I think the umpire's asking Greenbush if it hit him, and Coach Nunn gonna come down, and both umps are gonna get together here, as the runner, T.J. Remford, just kept running, as anybody would, as the ball rolled about 40 feet down the baseline. I don't know if we have the replay of that, Paul, but the, yeah, they're going to send it back as they're going to say it indeed was a foul ball because the ball balled so hard off. I don't know if you can even, I can't really tell what the, does it look? So they're really, so it wasn't a foul ball then, but they are going to rec say that it was and send him back to first. So there's a swing and a miss by Greenbush and that'll push the count to uh, a ball and two strikes on Kurt. We'll see if Coach Nunn does anything with Remp for leading off at first here. That ball hit high towards straightaway center field. Kaminsky did a nice job keeping him off balance on that breaking ball. Kurt kept the hands back, but it's just a fly to center. So a couple of unearned runs on one hit and one left. And uh, after two and a half here, that'll put the score at two to nothing for St. Louis Park. So two, two runs on one hit. The Burnley single was really important after Jeremillo reached with a two out error by Studsrud. Burnley worked the count full to three and two and then hit a line single to left. And then they both moved up to second and third on the, uh, on the wild pitch. So the wild pitch moved them into scoring position and then when Luka Savage hit the hard ground ball to Studsrud, the momentary bobble allowed the first run to score, but then the throw going wide allowed the second run, Burnley, also to score from second base. So fortunate half inning for St. Louis Park. And uh, let me take a look here at Red Knight Field. Beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I want to mention, too, if you're watching this game on replay, um, the Orioles uh, are going to have their own senior night next Tuesday, May 20th. Tuesday, May 20th, the Orioles host Washburn at 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. start. And uh, make sure you make your way out to Keller Field because uh, a lot of activities planned. Tomorrow is Little League Day for the doubleheader against Tatino Grace. If you, uh, and that, that'll be fun as well. So... Back to the top of the order to start the bottom of the third, and that's Sam Lynch who hit a hard ground ball the second that Borderwick fielded to lead off the game here. Left-handed batter, another one of those football players who did a great job for the conference ch conference champions, Red Knights, who lost that heartbreaker to De La Salle to go to the state tournament. Lynch wisely moving way up in the box here. 
Lucas Savage throwed a lot of breaking balls, and that one's hit hard. A little one hopper by Borderwick, who does nice. He sets. It was a nice job defensively, as he set himself well, backed up on the play, let the ball take one hop to him, and knew as a second baseman he had plenty of time to record the out. So another 4-3 liner for Lynch, and that'll bring up Nathan Hanks, who worked a, a, a walk to a one-out walk and came in. Ended up being forced later on in the inning. Hanks will bunt at least half of the time if he's given a chance. And he's going to pop that one to center. That one's hitting a hit. Not, tough chance for Burnley. Not able to come clean on that. So Hanks going to reach on a single as he kind of shot that towards left center. And Burnley ran hard from his center field spot all the way. Made a half dive attempt oh, nice. at it, but it was a really difficult play. So that'll bring up, here's watch the replay again. Joe kind of with a half dive at that. I, we're going to give him a single. And that'll bring up Studsrud, who's going to try to redeem for his errors last inning. And he hit a line shot single up the middle last inning. So you can imagine we're in his first at bat for a single. Lucas Savage wisely starts him off with a breaking ball. A little, little low for ball one. Jeremillo pinched more towards second as a big hole on the left side between Ferruli and Jeremillo. Lucas Savage, and indeed that's where the ball's hit. Jeremillo was pinched way towards second. Lucas Savage moved a fastball, and Studsrud just with a line shot single to sec into left field. So two for two for Studsrud. That'll push his average over 500 on the season. So, And that'll bring up Mikey McGill, uh, who hit a ball back to Lucas Savage and reached on a fielder's choice, the cleanup hitter. McGill, as we mentioned, uh, 15 RBIs, second on the team to Studsrud with 16. There's a fastball. Lucas Savage shaves the outside corner and works ahead. McGill going to look down at Coach Hemke for a sign here. Ferruli playing still on the grass, even with a strike. Orioles are going to. Jared Miller pulled way over towards second. That nice job by Lucas Savage. He misses there, but a nice low pitch there. If that ball would have been put in play, it would have been hit on the ground. So 1-1 one, one the count here, one down. Hanks at second after his single to left center. Studs Rude at first. That ball hit to the gap in left center on the line. Oh, a catch by Keller, throw back to Hanks. He's gonna make it back there. Tell you what, McGill hit it on the line to left field, a line shot. And a nice, you know, not much you can do there if you're a Red Knight fan, because he hit that ball on a ton. But a nice squeeze by Keller as he reacted beautifully in left field to that ball. So two down, first and second still. We'll see if Coach Hepke does anything. This is Kaminsky, who, the pitcher who walked in the first inning for the senior. Ferruli back behind the bag at third. <laughs> Orioles giving a lot of respect to, to Hanks at second as Nathan has stolen a lot of Stolen five bases on the year and is a real good base runner. Border Wick's going to kind of check him there from second. Nice camera angle there. A little up and in with that fastball. Going to work the count to a ball and a strike. So first and second, two out. McGill, as we mentioned, hit that well to left. It easily could have fallen in. Nice read by Keller. We'll see what happens here. That ball also inside, going to move Kaminsky off the plate and push the count to two and one. Two and one, we'll see if Coach Hemke has anything in store here with two down or if he's going to let Kaminsky swing away. And then he goes after a low fastball. There might have been ball, ball three, I'm not sure it was low. So that'll put the count at two balls and two strikes here. Lucas Savage doing a good job keeping the ball down and mixing his pitches up today. Him and Nordstrom seem to be working well together, this being his fourth start of the year, or fifth start of the year, I should say. Slow curve ball hit to short. Jerry Mill gonna stay down on it, throw hard, and a nice job. Good defense there, the last sequence by the Orioles, and that's gonna get their second and third out. Hanks and Nice job executing a curveball on the 2-2 pitch, and he kept it low in the zone, and it was hit to short there. We're going to step away momentarily after three innings to score. Oh, okay, we will not. We don't want to step away. So, anyway, just a couple other announcements we should make, Paul, um, since we have a little break here after three. 
Um, I did print out the, some of the prep leaders in different sports, and I wanted to make sure to shout out to a couple specific St. Louis Park and Benilde athletes since we're covering today. Paul, I wanted to make a mention to Chris Compton of the Star Tribune came out today, or yesterday actually, with the listings of some of the best athletes in the state in different categories. And he's he has, Chris Compton, senior offensive and defensive lineman for St. Louis Park's football team, also has thrown the discus 159 feet and 10 inches. It's the second longest throw in the state this year. He uh, He's definitely a candidate to win a state title. Wanted to throw him out. And we need to mention Maddie Houlihan in the, in the Red Knights softball team. Paul, I know you and I did a game last year, or one or two for the Red Knights. I don't know if you've been able to do any this year. Maddie's hitting 655 on the season, second in the state with 35 RBIs as well. And her teammate, Lily Johnson, I, got, I actually had to double check this to make sure this is right. She started all 16 games on the mound for Lily Johnson. Paul, I don't know if you're listening, 14 and two record, 117 strikeouts and a 1.45 ERA for Johnson. So, and we should mention St. Louis Park's own Lauren Resnick, who's an accomplished junior pitcher, had a few good starts of the season and she's been out quite a bit. So Park hasn't had to be able to rely on her. So just a few athletes we wanted to kind of spotlight here. Leading off the top of the fourth inning, here's the junior Archie Olson. Olson uh, batting fifth in the order. It'll be Olson, Keller, Henstein, four, five, six for the top of the fourth. A little half swing by Olson, gonna cost him there and work the count to 0 and 2. Kaminsky's done a great job working ahead, throwing a lot of strikes, only giving up one hit so far through three innings. So open stance by the junior. Down and in. Tough take there, but indeed Archie does take it. Looked like Kaminsky wanted that pitch and you can't blame him. Today's home plate umpire, Dave, I believe Dave Marndre. Big swing on that one, two pitch and that'll be the second strikeout of the game and that'll start things off. It'll bring up Jason Keller who made that nice catch in left field earlier in the game. For the junior Keller, we mentioned he starts also on the Oriole basketball team who started nothing but really juniors this year, so. Um. Chris, Chris, this is, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, sorry, a little. Chris has got so many responsibilities and so much to read. There's a nice pitch down and in. Not going to get the call there. That's going to push the count to one and one. Chris going to join us again. Chris, I think you're spread too thin over right. here. The PA duties, and, and then, but good to have you. That was that was a very fortuitous third inning for St. Louis Park, and not so much for Benil because <laughs> Benil crushed three balls. Had a couple Park made a couple good defensive plays, this is, and, and yep. defensively, that the two hundred runs were were tough there, right? It's. Uh some irony here. I'll let you make the call here. Yeah, it's Studs. who's going to pick it clean. Nice throw over to McGill for the second out of the inning. And then let me get this introduction, and then I'll uh, I'll give you an idea. Yeah, and Andrew Henstein going to bat next for St. Louis Park, number nine. For St. Louis Park, number nine, Andrew Henstein. Love to hear your insight. The, um, the Red Knights have been somewhat, I don't know what the word is, uh, cursed this year. A lot of men left on base. A lot of men left in scoring position. Uh, that they, we can't get that timely hit. We might hit the ball hard, but we hit it at someone. Well, and you know, McGill really hit that well, and Keller, who's batting here, had a nice read on it, but that easily could have been a easily could have been a two-run oh, double yeah, and split the gap. A double I mean, to the fence. And, oh, absolutely. You know, score everybody on. You clean the bases off, and all of a sudden you've got a tie game. Well, you know, one of the things that's really hard to explain to people that maybe don't follow a lot of high school baseball but see the Twins and then, you know, hardly ever see an error made is so much of, of these games is going to come down to what the unearned runs are as well. I mean, that's just the reality of it, especially as the teams get into the playoffs and right. pitching. And But I tell you what, Kaminsky's only given up one hit. He hasn't walked anybody. Yeah, you know, he's throwing so, a good game. So, I mean, there's nothing you can do there. He didn't need, and he bared down really well even after that, so... He's a veteran hurler who's worked ahead 0-2 to Henstein here with two down. 
And that one's hit to left center, gonna hit be deep, good be Nice read on it though, and an, ooh, a nice catch out by, by Crane, your left fielder. I thought it was over his head initially, and then I thought, oh no, he's kind of coasting like it's a piece of cake, but. <laughs> and hensing has been hitting the ball really well. He had three hits in the Orioles win against Southwest last night, so. Good job that time by your left fielder. For the Orioles, no runs, no errors, no hits. The Red Knights come to bats at the bottom of the fourth. Score St. Louis Park, the mill zero. <coughs> Swing by the concession stand. Hot dogs, is a great meal deal going on this afternoon. There he is. Hot dogs right off the grill. Jim Brown, yeah. Barry Crone. You see so two runs on two hits and no runs on four hits for Benil after two, or after three and a half. Seven inning games in high school baseball. And again, this is John Fromm joined with Chris O'Connor, veteran parent, announcer, sales member of the Clear Channel community, <laughs> hot dog salesman. Do you get any type of, a, um, you know, being in sales, do you get 5% on the this concession is, sales these are, these even? Are, or? It's a very valid question. <laughs> As we take a look at the concessions. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, look at that. You got, you got security over there with a guy in his sunglasses. Is like that D.B. Cooper from 1971, sure that, you know, maybe? Nobody pilfers anything over there. We get we have a very serious loss prevention program. It's, <laughs> it's just amazing. All right, let me get Rikini right. at the bat here. Here comes Christopher Rikini to lead things off. For the Red Knights, third baseman number 13, Chris and for Vlad, first at bat, had a nice at bat, hit it hard to shortstop. So Rakini officially 0 for 1 to lead off the bottom of the fourth inning here. Rakini and Kurt Greenbush, by the way, are practically best friends. They, they are. Oh, you yeah. Know, I mean, you probably knew that as well. So I know if, if Chris could have twin brothers or brothers' brothers, they'd probably all come out of St. Louis Park. <laughs> <laughs> which, well, we John, which, John, I mean, we can go on for right. hours. You we know? consider Chris a St. Louis Park guy, even though he's yeah. about 40 feet into Edina. And there's a line shot to the right field. He just pulled it a tad too early. You know, three years ago, my son Ryan played with Lucas Savage, mm -hmm. Kurt, a lot of these kids, and Chris. And Chris was the leading hitter on the team as a 14- and 15-year-old. Really delivered several clutch hits as well with two outs and he won a just, couple games. And Like you said, he's just a... Uh, Right. Lo loves this game and just oh. likes to play. He just likes to play. He really does. He, we did a sand lot or being for the club yeah. team at Mizzou next year. And he's got really good fundamentals too. You know, his, his, uh, he was really a tough out always, even in any kind of situation, made good contact as well. So. You know, the great story about Chris too is, and he'll he'll tell you all about it and show you the pictures. There's a nice line shot left center field. Is it gonna hit the gap? Oh, we're gonna hit off the tip of Burnley's glove, but tell you what, tough chance by Burnley, but I tell you what, I'm gonna give that a double because even though it hit off the tip, he had a long run and or a single and, and it was a tough chance. Joe's gonna wish he made that, but a nice well, hard hit. The right fielder for 20, Marshall Hempy. Here's a quick story about yeah, uh, Rakini is he uh, he was the only member of the Red Knight baseball team to actually crash and get into Joe Maurer's wedding. I think I heard, oh, there's a line shot. Same spot, left center. We'll see if Burnley can squeeze that. And Hempke robbed as well. So, yeah, that sounds like Vlad. I think I heard that story. I don't know who he went with to crash Maurer's wedding. But. True story. Has pictures to prove. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hempke with a liner. That's one down. That'll bring up Chris Landis, the catcher, who also hit it to center field. So. The Red Knights, the catcher, number one, Chris Landis. Yeah, I mean, since, you know, since Lucas Savage walked a couple guys in the first inning, a lot of contact, but he's really relying on his defense, and that really is his game. He's not trying to overpower. He's trying to keep it as down as he can to get the balls hit on the ground, but he's had a lot of Adam balls so far, so he's been fortunate that way, too. Give me a good pitcher and give me some great defense. <laughs> I know I know Burnley well, and he's going to be really mad at himself that he didn't squeeze the, the Rakini drive, but yeah, that's said, all right, Vlad. Yeah, no, uh, and I just want to say, I did give Rakini credit for a single. The scoreboard, the vanilla home operator gave that an error, so I just want to say that, Chris, in case you're watching the replay. No love from the vanilla dug out there. <laughs> not even homers. Not even a homer call. No, not even a homer Exactly, call. you gotta get a homer <laughs> call on that when he hit it that hard after the foul <laughs> ball, too, right? Down in the zone, Nordstrom gonna squeeze here. That's three and oh, so three and oh count to Landis with Riley Crane on deck here. Landis, the eight-hole hitter. You know that Lucas Savage wants to uh, try to, to deal with Landis and Crane here before he has to deal with the uh, the football amigos at the top of the order. Took a little off the fastball there, put it to three and one. So, Rakini at first after the line single to left center slash air, depending on who you believe. 
That one hit to Ferruli at third. Gonna slow hop, take his time, throw, and make sure they, no, oh, he's pulled off the bag. So I tell you what, just what the doctor ordered for Red Knight fans, the Ferruli throw gonna pull Borderwick off a of second base, and that error gonna pr allow Landis to reach. So that as well, if you watch the replay, plenty of time for Ferruli. He throws a little bit sidearm there, and Borderwick's got to reach high, Chris. And he, he gets, pulled him off the bat. Yeah, it pulled yeah. him off. So, de I mean, it's defense and extra runners. And So first and second, number nine hole hitter Riley, Klain, Riley Crane, who hit a line drive to the second baseman, Borderwick, a hard hit ball that Borderwick turned into a double play to end the set in the second inning, so. This is where the Red Knights need to strike. They need to take advantage right, right now. They need a hit in a very right. big way. And there it is towards right center, and it is hit deep. Henstein on the move. I don't think he's gonna get a play on it. It is over his head. It is gonna play it, I believe, one run. We'll see if they send the second. Indeed, they will. Bordowick throw gonna go to third, and a clean triple by your, the nine hole hitter. Riley Crane plates two runs here with one out in the fourth inning. And that'll push it to a tie game. So just what the doctor ordered, Chris, what you should mention that every time you bat. Every time you say that, there's gonna be a good hit now. One time in my <laughs> life, I'm right. <laughs> he really leaned into that and hit it well over Henstein's head. The Red Knights, the center fielder number 11, Sam Rich. I wouldn't be surprised to see a bunt or any kind of a push place so or else have everybody up here with one out. Pretty good speed, it looks like in Crane. Lynch can run like the win, the leadoff hitter here, so, and that's the go-ahead run at third here. My, uh, my gut tells me that he's not gonna bunt. Lynch will swing away and try and drive the ball through the uh, through the infield or look for a fly ball. Well, I'll tell you what, all four runs scored in this game, unearned runs. Yes. So it's, <laughs> a, that one there, that's gonna play another run here. A nice line single by Lynch, and that's gonna put the Red Knights up three to two here. So three to two with Lynch on first, still only one out, and that's the third hit of the inning as well. well not any activity in the in the Oriole bullpen. And Nathan Hanks with a lot of options, with only one down, Ferruli at third. Hadn't played a lot of third this year, but he's played that in the past. He's up on the grass. Greenbush holding. Good hold over there. We should mention on the season, Nord's from two for 15 on throwing out runners, so about 15, 18%. So. I know Lynch probably can run a four seven. Lynch, 40, uh, Lynch so. has got some speed over there. If they <laughs> right. see a little opportunity, he'll he'll make a move to second. And Chris, this is one of the, my favorite parts of baseball. You got a left-handed batter, yep. pull on the right side to hit through. So Hanks might try to pull it and play some hit and run here. He's also got the wheels to straight steal, so he might not want to throw a breaking ball, but he does throw it, and it's bunted foul. So would have been a great pitch to steal on, and indeed he was running with it. Might have had a steal and bunt play instead of a bunt and steal, but yeah. And Hanksy, uh, Hanksy can spray the ball. He can go to the right side, he can go to the left side, so either right. way, he just needs to put bat on ball. Yep, he's got some holes out there. Borderwick and Jeremillo relatively. Another breaking ball, that one down and in. I'm gonna push the count to one ball and two strikes to the senior, Nathan Hanks. Nathan reached both times, walk, and a single, a hard single last inning. That fastball pop foul. I think that's gonna get out of play, but Ferruli gonna put a run on it over there. I'm also gonna make another prediction, bold if you might say, but uh, I'll sure. be surprised if this game ends up 3-2. These, uh, these teams, I think, are gonna put some more runs up on the board. Well, you know, Kaminsky's done a marvelous job pitching backwards a lot this game, starting a lot of guys out with breaking balls and really in command. And uh, the Red Knights have had a lot of hard hit balls. So we'll see what happens. See what goes on here with Lynch. One and two, the count rides along at. Lucas Savage entered the game with 20 innings pitched and 33 hits allowed. So he's used to working from the stretch and and, uh, but big hole on the right side, as we mentioned here. He did not go, that is correct. So two and two, um, that would have been a terrible call if he said he went. <laughs> Lucas Savage, a junior or senior? He's a senior. He's a senior this year. Yeah, he and Greenbush and the second baseman are hockey guys, okay. and then there's a yep. few other ba basketball guys, but. 
Greenbush played a lot of left field last year for Park, and then Lucas Avage will play third mostly when he's not pitching. So Two and two the count. Nathan going to take a nice take there on a 2-2 fastball that was down and in. That's going to push the count full, and I'm, I have a feeling we're going to see Mr. Lynch off of the pitch as he takes a big look over, that, over there at Coach Hemke. So full count, still only one down, three runs in in the bottom of the fourth inning here. Lucas Savage keeping tabs as he's obviously aware with a full count and a yeah, he knows that Lynch has got some <laughs> Lynch has got some speed at first. Ooh, nice catch by Greenbush there on the thrower that almost went wide and he would have ran all day because the right fielder wasn't reacting on that play. And Absolutely, he, you know. Still a full count, one down. Nathan swing and a miss, throw through by Nordstrom. Nice throw, unfortunately he's gonna be safe. So Hanks goes down swinging for the second out of the inning, but Lynch steals on the full count pitch and that'll bring up Studsrud, who's already right, two for two in the day with two hard singles. So Studsrud trying to get that average even more over 500, I think he was at like 505 or something the last at bat. So. Well, as I said, John, he just, and you've seen it tonight. Yeah, he's oh, he's yeah. hit the ball. He's, he's hitting the ball right now, right on it. He's seeing yeah. it, uh, really seeing it. And they're way up in the box to make sure any of the slow stuff they're going to hit fair like that. Even oh. if he would have offered at that curve, he could have kept right. it fair. So going to work, Lucas Savage is going to work ahead with a strike here. And this is an important he might choose to pitch very carefully to Studsrud with first base open here, Chris. It wouldn't surprise me. He doesn't want to go well. Yeah. And that, I think he kind of went down in a way yep. with a change up there. And even 0-2 here, I'm, you know, because, and, and although McGill can smack the ball as well, you just almost don't want to be beat here with two outs. No, I don't think he's going to get anything. Uh, he won't get much nice. Uh, <laughs> Nothing gift Nice wrap. offering from Lucas Savage at this point. There's hit hard to short. Jeremillo ranging to his left. Clean field. Studsrud speedily down the ride as he can roll, but a 6-3 put out by Studsrud. So three runs in the bottom of the fourth inning on our plate. The Red Knights ahead, 3-2. to two. Um, We're going to step away. Those three runs were a result of two errors by the Orioles, as well as three hits, including a single. For the Red Knights. Excuse me, a sing, on excuse me just one error. On three base. runs to on deck, three score. hits and two errors technically because they're going to credit the Rakini ball as an error in center and they're going to create also caught saying that the Landis reaching was because of an error so uh, three to two after four Paul if we can we'll just step away just for a second if it's possible here on 16. okay we'll be right back stick with us for the exciting conclusion What's the best way to rebuild the Twin Cities neighborhoods most in need? You raise hope. You show homeowners that someone cares by volunteering or donating to Rebuilding Together. We are a nonprofit organization that provides critical home repairs, helping low-income families, seniors, and veterans stay safe, warm, and independent in their own homes. You can restore homes and pride in Twin Cities neighborhoods. Donate or volunteer at Rebuilding Together Twin Cities. Back. We are back, top of the fifth inning. Patrick Borderwick down no balls and two strikes as you join us here. Michael Kaminsky working on a one hitter. Red Knights up 3 2 after four innings. And that trying to go up the ladder, but Borderwick going to foul that off here. Patrick officially on the day uh, 0 for 1 as he grounded out to Rikini, who made the play going to his left. Rikini playing way behind third base. There's a breaking ball hit back to Kaminsky and a grounder hit hard right to him. A little flip over to first and another put out here. And that'll be, uh, that'll bring up Kenny Ferruli, the third baseman here. Ferruli officially on the day 0 for 1 as he grounded out to second base. We should mention, I didn't get a chance to talk about it. The game has been flying by, but both of these teams sitting very well position wise when you get into the uh, Section six triple A baseball tournament. Strike one again as he works ahead. 
Park officially is six and one in the section, and Benilde four and one. The only loss Benilde has was to Park, and Park's only loss was to Armstrong. So, Veruli going to hit that high and fouls it off. And Benilde with some good wins against Wyzetta, as well as Hopkins and Edina. Park with some nice wins over Cooper as well. And Southwest and the Washburn game next Tuesday also will have seeding implications. So, Furley going to go high and wide. That ball going to be dropped for strike three. Furley going to try to run down to first, but unfortunately strike three for him, and that'll be the second out of the inning. And put it back to the top of the order. And... Uh, just like in the third inning with two outs, Joey Jeremillo going to bat here. He's reached twice on a single and on an error. He has scored a run. And for the junior Jeremillo, as we mentioned, curveball whack towards right, left center. He's going to get the. He's been on all three times as he. Fought that breaking ball off, and he, he's seen the pattern that Kaminsky's been throwing breaking balls early in the count, and he moved up in the box a little. He just was able to barely get it over the head of Studsrud. And that'll bring up Joe Burnley. I apologize. Burnley also had that clean single. So third hit officially for the Orioles of the game. Burnley one for two. We'll see if the Orioles down by a run here in the top of the fifth with two out do anything. Burnley swings and misses late on that fastball. So 0-1 the count here on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. That one. So big cut that time. Gonna work ahead in the count. No balls and two stripes. Kaminsky, Kaminsky been on top of his game all the way through. Just the three hits, both runs unearned. Just misses outside there. So a good take for Burnley to push the count to one and two. Haven't seen any action in the Oriole bullpen as even though Lucas Savage did, a, did give up three runs last inning, two of those runs were under, and actually all three of them were. Beautiful stop by Landis. Jerry Miller gonna make his way down to second. Ball skips away, but he's gonna stay put there. So let's see if the wild pitch can help the Orioles at all as it pushes Jerry Miller to second with two outs. 2-2 count to Joe Burnley, the junior center fielder. Hit hard towards short to studs. Big nice chop by Keaton. Good throw over to first. And that 6-3 put out is going to retire the Orioles here in the fifth. No runs on one hit, and that'll take us to the bottom of the fifth. Three to two, Benilde St. Margaret's in a game that is moving very fast. So officially two runs on three hits and two errors for the Orioles. Three runs on six hits and three errors for the Red Knights. Uh, all the runs in the game have been unearned, unfortunately, but a lot of ball game left to be played. And for the Red Knights, as we enter the bottom of the fifth, it's gonna be the four, five, six hitters, McGill, Kaminsky, and Rakini. And we're doing take me out to the ball game here. I don't know if we can hear that as it's the bottom of the fifth inning stretch since it's only a seven inning game. So I'm joining the crowd, Paul and Tom Remfer up on uh, up on camera. I know you don't need to stand and stretch because you've been standing for an hour an hour already doing camera up there. So so as we mentioned, the Orioles are going to host Tatino Grace tomorrow. Um, Whatever the outcome of the game today, whether the Orioles win or the Red Knights win, has implications the doubleheader tomorrow. Because if the Orioles can win the doubleheader tomorrow, then even if Benilde wins today, Benilde and Titino will share the conference with three losses. And if the Orioles win today and win both games tomorrow, then they'll win the conference outright. So really a lot to play for for both teams still the last two and a half innings. And as we mentioned, just to follow up, the Red Knights Four, hosting Red Cooper Knights, this Friday, base, May 16th for McGill. Senior Day. So come on down here. And the Orioles Senior Day next Tuesday, May 20th against Washburn at 6.30. So here's McGill to lead it off. 0 for 2. He hit that line drive to left field that Keller made a nice play on his last at bat. And then he hit a hard ground ball back to Lucas Savage in the first inning. 
Luca Savage going to miss inside there and work 2 and 0 here. That ball hit high, deep, and long to left, right field, and I think, and that, and it is a long home run by Mikey McGill as he squares one up beautifully on the bat and hits a long home run to right field, far over the head of Andrew Henstein. So for the senior McGill, officially on the season, I have that as his first home run of the year, and that's gonna play to 16th RBI. And he's getting mobbed by the gang there, as that I believe is the fourth team home run. As Studzud had a pair, Lynch here at one, and that one by McGill. So, solo home run on the 2-0 fastball. Got a lot of it as it was more down the middle of the plate, and he squared it up nicely. So, that'll bring up Kaminsky here. Kaminsky on the night officially 0 for 1 as he walked and grounded hard to shortstop. So. And of course, he's only given up three hits on the mound in five innings. So Luca Savage, again, this better falls down back 2-0. and Jake walked two early on in the game in the first inning and hasn't walked anybody since then. That ball pops straight up. No play for Nordstrom, though. You mentioned Kyle Nordstrom. He doesn't bat in the game as the Orioles use the DH for the catching position, but he's caught almost all the games as the junior. Adam Pettit, another junior, backs him up behind the dish. That one down and low, hit towards right center. I don't think Burnley's got a beat on it. That time he dives and makes a really nice play in right center. So a nice catch by Burnley as a nice squeeze and Kaminsky robbed of a hit for the first out of the inning. Don't know if we have the replay of that, but Joe's had two other balls today that he had plays on like that. And this one, the third time was definitely the charm and a beautiful piece of work by, by Joe Burnley as he veins far, far and in and made a nice sliding catch on that, and he needed to slide. So here's Rakini, who reached last inning and scored the first run for the Benil, for Benil to lead off the bottom of the fourth. And then he hits a line shot over the right center fielder's head. Hensi not able to get a glove on it. Rakini racing to second. Take a look at Hempke. We'll see if he moves to third. He's just going to hold up. So Rakini really feeling the rhythm. Those last two at bats, he. He tattooed a long fall ball last time, and then he hit a line drive to left center. I credited it as a single. It was officially credited as an error um, on the on the drop. But for Rakini on at second base with one down, and Hemke, who's one for two, hit a single and a line drive to center field. Lucas Savage working ahead here with one out. Ferruli playing back at third on the senior Hemke. Ball tails down and in. Really nice camera angle I wanted to shout out to Paul. We don't have the center field option here because it's so far away, but you can really see the balls tailing down and in with that and down and away. Nordstrom setting up outside. That one hit hard towards shortstop. Nice job by Jeremillos. He fakes the throw and he's going to drop the tag on Rakini there. Tough job. Anytime the ball, when you're at second base, if the ball's hit in front of you, as that ball was, you have to stay put. And unfortunately, uh, Chris thought that uh, Jeremillo was just going to throw it to one. short Chris. or throw it to nice. first, but he faked the throw to third and then just tagged him. So heads up baseball by Joey Jeremillo at short to cut the leadoff man down on the fielder's choice play. And Hempke reaches with two outs on the fielder's choice. And here's Landis, who reached on the uh, error by Kenny Ferruli at third. And officially scored the second run of, of last inning. So four to two if you just joined us. The Orioles with two runs in the third inning. And then BSM answering with excuse me, answering with three runs, including a big two-run triple by Riley Crane. And then a home run to lead off the, excuse me, the bottom of the fifth by Mikey McGill to make it 4-2 here in the bottom of the fifth. Good low target that time, just misses as the count pushes to 2-1 and one to, to Landis. Chris, Chris. 
mean, as Chris O'Connor to step back in, and boy, McGill really leaned into that, and so did Rikini. That was two beautiful hits. That's the. Uh, Ooh. Uh, that was that. That was home run by McGill was the hardest ball I've seen him hit <laughs> in his career. Because he just, I mean, that I don't know what the distance is down the line. I know it's, but I tell you, that must have. Must have beat it by 30, 40 he, feet at least. He killed that job. <laughs> I know. And then Rakini really unloaded Rikini's, on that one, yeah, too. Rikini's yeah, Rakini's was a bomb as well. Yeah, they uh, yeah. they have really put bad on ball in this inning. Oh, yeah. Well, really, the whole game. Nice. Looks like he's going to call strike two on Landis here, so that'll push the count back to full here. We'll see if, uh, if Hemke takes off from first with two outs. So... That's always big to get that two-run lead as you go late in the game, especially the way Kaminsky's throwing, only giving up three hits through five innings and having not walked a batter either, Chris. It, uh, if you take away that one bad inning, right. the Red Knights gave up those two runs, you eliminate those errors, all of a sudden it looks like they have, you know, would be dominant in this, uh, dominating this game. Ground ball to, over to Ferruli, who fields it clean, and the throw over to third, and that'll retire for the Red Knights here in the bottom of the fifth inning, but not before the big home run by Mikey McGill plates the fourth run of the game and pushes the lead to four to two after five innings. I'll make a note here. Um, what kind of things are, you have? do you know what kind of things special are planned for senior night on Friday for any fans that might want to come out and just watch the game against Cooper or just plan kind of? Is, the plan, John, is to uh, to introduce the uh, the boys and their parents. About 345, our game against uh, Cooper is set for 415. So probably have about a 15 minute program where all the kids get introduced. And again, I keep going back to, you know, last year we had three yeah. seniors on the club. Right, this year we have the 12. <laughs> right. So the program's going to be a little long. Maybe a little parade coming out to the field you, on Friday afternoon. Are you sure it might not start at 1230 to get all 12 <laughs> with the parents well, and we're, the you know, siblings? We're and encouraging people to leave early to beat the traffic <laughs> and uh, and get a prime spot. Right, and, and make sure you get your good, plenty of good seating here, though. That's good to have you have plenty of bleacher seating, so. Yeah, no, I was going to say, it's really going to be interesting. Next Tuesday is the end of the regular season. Um, right. Benilde 4-1 and one if the hold, if the hold, or excuse me, if the score holds. I'll, I'll eventually get it. They'd be 5-1 and one in their section games. Park was 6-1 and one in their section games. So even with the loss, if that if the score doesn't change, both teams sitting really well. You want to be a top four seed, yes. as you know, because 5 through 12 all have to play next Thursday, the 22nd. But 1 through 4 get Thursday off, you get a bye. And I think the uh, the boys would like to have yeah. that first bye. Both teams would like to have Oh, yeah. Bye. And I think a really good chance for both of them Absolutely. to get it, with Absolutely. Armstrong also, yes. I think, being in the mix. And I don't know who else, but... Uh, and here's somebody who definitely wants to try to right the ship here. Uh, here's Jake Lucas Savage, the pitcher leading off. Lucas Savage officially on the day, 0 for 2. He reached on the uh, the McGill error that played it actually both runs uh, and the the second error the la the last thing. Yeah, the first five runs of the game were, were both unearned, or all unearned on both teams, so. And that's going to happen. Good fastball by Kaminsky. Does Michael, does Michael have plans to pitch next year in college, or do you know? He is uh, planning on heading down to Gustavus and oh. uh, playing for them. And I know Coach Carroll down there, who's been a longtime coach. Nice breaking ball there, so that. He's headed down with uh, Jimmy Crone, another senior. Uh, Crone also oh, a pitcher, sure. so the yeah. two of them are headed down yes. to play ball. Right. Well, wonderful. A nice, beautiful setup, and that ball peeled away. And yeah, I know Coach Carroll's been down there for years. I know his brother is. The, my son was a hockey goalie, and his brother is Steve Carroll, the longtime goalie coach. Oh, sure. You Absolutely. probably you probably know. Yeah. So good for them. There, breaking ball, but hit nicely to second base. Hank's going to gobble that up and get out Lucas Savage, no problem. Nice finish on that breaking ball again. So, well, good for the two of them. So, that'll bring up Curtis Greenbush, officially 0 for 2 on the day for the Orioles' leading hitter. For the Orioles, number 16, Curtis Greenbush. Down there, stay ahead. Let's go, 12. It's a little 4 3 put out to start the top of the sixth inning here. Hits that hard to studs it as well. He's going to gobble that up. Easy throw over to first and no problem whatsoever. A nice 
four pitch inning so far to record the first two outs and Michael might have to pitch another game. He's had <laughs> few, so few pitches this game with all the contact and the plays. So, right. That'll bring up Archie Olsen. He officially also is 0 for 2 on the day. And I had a chance to see uh, Kaminsky pitch twice last year, and then last week I got to see him pitch against uh, Totino. And their first and second place hitters did quite well in that game. But the rest seven batters of the order only even had four hits, even the game I was at. So I, even though the top two guys got on, he really had, a, I thought, a really nice effort last week. And He's been, uh, you know, I mentioned he's a, uh, one of the travel ball players on Benil. Uh, he, along with my son, John uh, Lynch, uh, McGill, all played in the uh, Plymouth YZ travel oh, program sure. growing up. And Mike and John have been right. teammates since tens. Have they really? Wow, you talk <laughs> so about a lot. We've played together for eight years now. So, And what? And that's got to be nice for you, too, because Wyzetta made, for high school ball, made the state last year. Yeah. So they probably knew a lot of those kids from, or, it's, you know, I'm obviously we, knew of them, too, right? It, if they didn't end up with Wyzetta, they came to Benilde. A lot of kids from the Benilde program went through Wyzetta and uh, Plymouth for their travel baseball. Archie Olson making a deposit on top of the Benilde St. Margaret School oh, up we, there as he can a, really hit those foul balls. If we had a too. nickel, John, for every ball that's gone up there, you and I'd be going down and get a nice steak dinner at Murray's tonight. Even better, I'd like to send some money to the concession stand yeah. away here, right? Or out of hot dogs, by the way. We uh, we blew okay. through them today. They're a hot oh. item. The hot dogs are a hot item. Ooh, just misses on that one. Let's see if he gets an appeal on that. Oh, catcher land is not going to ask for one. So that'll push it to two and two. Again, Kaminsky still with no walks in the game. He entered the game with nine walks in 30 innings, but um, he's really mastered the control. That's hit up the middle. Hanks ranging to his right, feels it clean, and Nathan might have hurt himself on that. I don't know if he twisted his ankle when he landed, but because he got to that no problem, but he had to go yeah. left to right really well. And you see the senior Hanks down a little bit, but he's tough. It's going to take more than even a sprained ankle to keep him, to pull you him know, out I, of this I game. think, John, he was just the way he was. I can't really see on the monitor because it's uh, pretty right right here. It is. looks just like yeah. he planted his foot wrong. Paulie, do you have that again? I, we're trying to watch that. So he goes left to right. It was hit well, hit up the middle by Olsen, and then he just, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah might have just, just rolled it. Slightly rolled it. Yeah, officially the Orioles are going to get credited for a hit on that because there was nothing Nathan could do. He looks like he's Definitely in some pain out there, but he's going to shake it off and Kaminsky checking on his senior teammate. And that'll bring up Jason Keller, who officially 0 for 2 with two ground outs to second and short on the game. So two out single for Olsen. Infield variety. Fourth of the game for St. Louis Park here. Keller had a nice home run. I did. I wasn't there as a strike said. I, I, I heard he had a nice home run when these teams met before, which was his first of his yes. high school career. So yeah, that ball he hit out was uh, was well struck at their park. Kaminsky really mixing it up between the change, a good fastball in the low 80s, and then also really mass, really an excellent changeup as well too. You got a three pitch mix there, so. Coach Carroll have a, nice to have a couple of aces coming down there as freshmen and working their way into the Mayak. That fastball saws off Keller, no doubt. Rakini ranging to his right. Quick throw over to first and an even better scoop by McGill and that's gonna be the third out of the inning. So a nice 5-3 put out, nicely done on both ends and that'll retire the Orioles here in the top of the sixth inning. As Keller got sawed off by that fastball that buried in on his knuckles and uh, that'll make it uh, still four, four to two after five and a half. So as we mentioned, fans, if you're interested in getting a copy of this game or any of the games we've done on Park TV, I know we've won two other Park games and I know there'll be another Benil game. And look at, that's a reason to get a copy of the game if no other reason, right, Paul? What do we got? A Whoa, we got a potential football player working on his off-season conditioning. Anyway, go to parktv.org to, for replay times of this game or tell others they can watch these events online or call Paul with any feedback. If you want to buy a DVD, if you're interested in volunteering, Tom Remfer, again, for the third time, father of TJ Remfer, our volunteer uh, cameraman tonight. Normally we have paid camera people. We could not have brought you this game without a camera person. 
And uh, I'm very appreciative, as all of you should be, that Mr. Remper volunteered. And give Paul a call. It's $15 if you want to get a DVD of the game. If you want more than one, you can get there are 10 apiece if you buy three or more. And after five, a few changes for the Orioles. And one of the big changes is junior Andrew Henstein, the left-hander, going to be the call to the bullpen as George Thorogood and bad to the bone plays in the background. Henstein officially on the year. This will be his third appearance. Five innings. He has given up five hits. He has walked three, and he has struck out seven for the junior. He and Greenbush, as well as Danny Foltz, are officially left-handed options in the Oriole bullpen. Uh, Henstein um, pitched five innings so far. Greenbush has seen three on the mound. It'll be interesting to see how the Orioles utilize their bullpen as the season goes here as they get ready for the playoffs. So perhaps Henstein auditioning for a bigger role tomorrow. I'm assuming, I guess, that uh, Archie, or excuse me, that Kenny Ferruli might get one of the starts against Tino tomorrow, but I'm not sure. And possibly they'll try to bring Archie Olsen back on one day's rest after he only threw four innings. So, but all hands on board as you get ready for the section. So Henstein gonna deliver here. That ball popped foul as well. And this is Riley Crane who had the biggest hit of the game by far with uh, two runners reaching after errors. He lined a long triple as the nine hole hitter to right field to knock in two runs in his last at bat. And that ball clacked hard towards right center. Looks like Burnley gonna put the squeeze on that but again a hard hit ball by Crane and Joe Burnley gonna retire him for the first out of the bottom of the sixth inning. A nice job as well. You can see like Crane was uh, this call is getting some more varsity service and uh, along with Riley Simonetti, another sophomore who we haven't seen a lot this year, but Riley really got a lot of playing time towards the end of the season last year and has a really big left-handed stroke. So look for him in the future for Benilde. So with one down back to the top in the order and Sam Lynch who's hit three balls really hard, doesn't have anything to show for it. Um, this is a chance for the lefty Hanstein to get seen against a couple of lefties in a row in Lynch and Hanks here. Another strike as well as Hanstein gonna work ahead 0-2 on the count. And this might be a role for either Greenbush or uh, Hanstein or even both of them come important times is bringing in a lefty to face a lefty. That ball chopped towards left center. Should just be a routine fly. Keller, a little bit of a trouble with that, but he squeezes that for the second out of the inning. So, and that'll bring up Nathan Hanks, officially one for two on the day. Nathan with a walk, a single, and he struck out last time. As I mentioned, my son Ryan Fromm played five years of baseball with Nathan in Crystal Little League. And out of our 12 or 11 player roster in 2007, I believe eight of the players played varsity baseball. And I think we're gonna end up with five that play college baseball. And uh, Nathan was certainly a huge part of that team. Great, great defense at second and third and in the outfield and catching some back then. But he was always a great bunner and a great teammate. He was also a youth hockey teammate of several of the Orioles as he and Kurt Greenbush and Jake Lucas Savage played on that Bantam A Minneapolis Park State team when they were in ninth grade. So a little slow breaking ball by Henstein there. As we mentioned, Andrew again, just a junior, seeing a much more prominent role as the season's gone on. Three big hits in the win last night against Southwest. Breaking ball falls low again, and Nathan, as he does so frequently, will work the count, spoil a lot of pitches, and generally uh, make you beat him. So, officially on the year has seven walks. That fastball gonna be popped to left field. If you can see it, Keller, no problem on the squeeze, and a one, two, three inning on three fly balls to the outfield by the junior Henstein. And he is rewarded for his one, two, three inning by being the leadoff hitter in oh, the bottom so of the seventh for St. Louis Park. And we'll see what no St. Louis Park can do to manufacture two runs to, seventh, to keep the, the game alive. 14. It's gonna be Henstein, Borderwick, and Ferruli. One, two, three. 
And uh, for Coach Jim Nunn, as in his second year as the Orioles head coach, he's gathered the, the players over by the third base dugout along with Danny Bissonette and Coach Tom Spath. And uh, just wants to try to make sure the kids get fired up and have a good at bat here. Kaminsky, as we mentioned, has not walked anyone, only officially given up four hits, two for Jeremillo, one for Burnley, and one for Olsen in six innings. And... Uh, And Kaminsky got the start last year in the opener against the Orioles, and the Orioles got three runs on him, I believe, in the third and the fourth inning on hits. And then he didn't enter into the final decision, but uh, last year the games were four to three, Benilde won, and then Park with an eight to three win. We mentioned the Orioles defeated Benilde eight to seven last week, excuse me, the week before, and the Orioles out hit Benilde 14 to seven in that game. So, uh, Tables turned in terms of the hits this game as well as Benilde with a lot harder contact, more hits, four runs on eight hits officially for the Red Knights, two runs on four hits for the Orioles. And here is Henstein, as we mentioned, Andrew, 393 going into the game with 12 ribbies. Probably taking a strike here because they need a runner. And indeed, he gets a strike early on. Borderwick along with Ferruli do seven, eight, nine for the Orioles here. Swing and a miss on that pitch, gonna push the count to 0-2, so. Good breaking ball for strike three as he locked him up with the curve ball there. Good location down and away for the first out of the game, or of the inning, excuse me. That'll bring up Borderwick officially, the second baseman made some nice plays at second. Also, uh, officially on the day, 0 for 2. Grounded out to third and back to the mound for the sophomore, Patrick Borderwick. Again, as he's done the whole game without walking a batter, he commands ahead early in the count. A little more fastballs as the game's gone on to start things off than he did earlier. Changing his pitching pattern. 0-2 again as he's right on. I don't have the official pitch count, but I... I only, I officially had only in the in the mid 60s for pitches through six innings, so. And that's gonna be another chopper hit to second. Hank's gonna charge and throw. Easy 4-3 put out on Borderwick. And it's been six pitches and six strikes here in the top of the seventh inning. And he's one out away from a complete game effort. Both runs were unearned that the Orioles scored in the third inning. And it's all up to T.J. Remfer pinch hitting for Ferruli here. Remfer also another junior as we talked about. Remfer on the year um, has had 17 at bats with five hits, enjoyed a couple of doubles, played some outfield, good wheels as well. He's gonna take strike one and he might be an important cog with his speed as the Orioles get into the playoffs here. As a good contact man. That one chop foul. Gonna push the count to 0-2. So Kaminsky, one strike away, still hasn't thrown a ball in the inning. Eight strikes, eight pitches and eight strikes in the inning. So he's gonna get mobbed as well he should by his, uh, he's kept everything down. He's used all three pitches and here's the 0-2. Change up, just gonna be whacked back to him in an easy play on the flip. Over, and there's your complete game effort. A complete game four-hit gem by Michael Kaminsky, the senior right-hander, who moves on the season. What an effort. No walks, as we talked about. He moves to 5-1 and one on the season. He has now pitched 37 innings on the season, given up 41 hits, but only nine walks. He didn't necessarily strike out a ton. He had four Ks officially for the Orioles. So contact definitely made, but he kept him off balance. And these teams are gonna split the season series as they have for the last three years. Orioles uh, fall victim to the Red Knights four to two today. Officially, that's gonna eliminate the Orioles from contingent for the conference championship as that's their fourth conference loss. But if the Orioles can come off the mat tomorrow against Tatino and somehow get a doubleheader sweep against Tatino, then uh, Red Knights and Tatino would actually split the conference. So I want to make sure to give a special shout out as you see uh, 
This is one of the first times we've been able to bring you a Benilde St. Yes. Louis Park baseball game in the last few years and I'm really thankful for Paul Broden and Tom Remfer on camera our volunteer camera man today if you do want to get a copy of this game remember go to go to the Park TV website and I just wanted to say the last home game for the Orioles will be Tuesday May 20th against Washburn make sure you make your way over to Keller Park because there'll be a big senior program for seniors Kurt Greenbush as well as Jake Lucas Savage and the other three. And if you want to get a copy of today's game, 952-924-2635 is the number. And it's $15. And again, the playoffs will start next Thursday, May 22nd, or the 23rd. And Chris O'Connor joining us. We had nice, did a little wrap up of Kaminsky's log. I officially had seven innings pitched, four walks. The, the seventh inning? Yes. Nine pitches, yeah, nine strikes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> strike. It just I only had no, I might be wrong because we were talking I only had him having 74 pitches for the yeah, game. Yeah, he, he did not throw a ton of pitches tonight. It was just <laughs> no if, walks. Again, I mean, we <laughs> talked about if you isolate that one inning where he gave up the, the two, uh, the yeah, two that's unearned, runs, right? Um, he really has a uh, stellar performance tonight. So yeah, that was really fun. I was I've, I'm yeah. glad we televised this game tonight because oh. I thought he threw a good game. I really think the nice Kaminsky game. family should be should be getting about 15 DVDs at 10 bucks a pop. I would think they'd want to get one to every relative of this game. I'd up that price to 15 a piece. Exactly, a little profit margin. But no, margin. and you know, important because, you know, um, the Orioles have been swinging and hitting yeah. well, but he threw all three pitches today yes. and he kept the ball down. He threw, and early in the game, he was pitching backwards, the curveball yep. early on to start things. Then as the game went on, he'd start off with a fastball. Orioles had no idea what pitch was coming, yeah. and he could control everything, and that's why you get wins over quality teams like Wyzetta, et cetera, as the season's gone on. You just, and you're right, the, the, if it wasn't for some good plays in certain times, the score could have been much greater than it was, absolutely. And a shout out to Mikey McGill for his first big, long, I don't know if that was his first high school home run, but boy, did he unload on that to seal the deal for Benilde in the bottom of the fifth there. My guess is his folks are taking him out for a little ice cream after this game. <laughs> well, and I have a feeling too, Chris, we're going to have a, you know, it's, it'd be fun to see the, both the teams meet again. The seeding meeting for the section is next Tuesday. Right. The top four teams are going to get a bye. I have a feeling both teams are going to get a bye. I would agree. I think we'll both have the bye the first time around, and, and it would be play nice to yeah. play one more game. Exactly. So uh, hopefully, and hopefully we yeah. can bring you more for both teams for Park TV and... Uh, Otherwise, just great day to be out here and uh, come on out on Friday for Benilde Senior Night. Come on out next Tuesday for the Orioles Senior Night as they play Washburn. And uh, I enjoyed it as well. Thanks, John. I'm glad you let me sit in for just oh. a little bit and hopefully we can do another we'll game. We'll do it again. Go ahead. Even, even though I've no, I, I missed out on John Hanks being here, I really enjoyed <laughs> getting to know you and uh, enjoyed the stories. And uh, glad we could embarrass Chris Chris Rakini a little bit by calling him Vladimir too. Many, so. many thanks, John. See you so. soon. All right. That, that does it here for our crew here at Park 16. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time here on Park 16. Have a good day. <laughs>